<laughs> Howdy guys, welcome to night two of Big Brother season 23 and welcome to Cliff Notes from outside the Big Brother house. <sighs> Can I just say this evening, <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of talking going on. Look at this. It's only night two and I've already got bags under my eyes trying to keep track of everything that's going on. There's been a lot of talking. We're going to try to cut. I could probably talk for two or three hours on what happened overnight. Y'all don't want that. I don't want that. I'm going to keep it to 15 minutes. I'll give you the key highlights, but uh, let's just say the theme of this evening, alliances, alliances, alliances. You get an alliance, you get an alliance, you get an alliance. There's a lot of talk and a lot of a lot of moving parts all at once. The other theme of this evening, a lot of players playing too hard and too fast, too early in the game. Now, yes, we've seen in past seasons, a lot of past seasons, where alliances form very early in the game. And if you weren't part of that initial alliance, your, your game was in jeopardy. So I get it. I understand why everyone's trying to quickly form up and, and all. But how do you trust anyone uh, on, on night two? How do you truly trust them? I guess you, you don't, but that, it's not stopping people from forming alliances uh, in, in this particular season, which as a viewer, pretty entertaining. Inside the house, whew, there's a lot of stress going on with these people. It, it's going to be a long season. I, you would think they're in night 40 or 50. No, nah, it's, it's just night two, uh, but they're, they're playing the game quickly. Uh, so we'll talk about that. So the feeds come back on. We discover that Christian has won the, the wild card. He's drugged Xavier along with him. As the feeds open up, the big news is the backyard's open for the first time. The house guests all run out. They're enjoying everything. Uh, Brittany immediately starts running laps back and forth. Not what old Boss Hog did. I think I went over and sat in the hammock and said, oh, it's so iconic. I love it. But Everyone's out there. They're excited to be in the backyard. And that lasts for about five or ten minutes before everyone breaks up into little groups and starts whispering and, and conspiring and, and doing the things that you do inside the Big Brother house. Uh, so with, a, with that in mind, a few, a few of the conversations that do take place. Uh, we've got Frenchie and, and Aza in the uh, hammock. Uh, and Frenchie is, is saying that, hey, Derek X, uh, things keep getting coming back to me that... Derek X is really throwing a lot of people under the bus. He, he's making things up. He's misrepresenting people's positions. Uh, Frenchie really sounds like uh, Derek is probably his, his prime target at this point in time. Now, earlier, we had heard Frenchie say that he really wanted to get out the, uh, the, the jocks in the house, and he wanted to be a showman's killer. Well, the showmances haven't quite firmed up yet, so that's probably not on the radar. But uh, from, from the jock standpoint, uh, it really probably was a huge, huge safety for, for Christian. If Christian hadn't won that uh, wild card competition, uh, I think the idea was probably to backdoor uh, Christian and, and send him out the door. Well, now he's safe, and so that's uh, things have had to change. And it really sounds like Frenchie's new target probably is Derek, uh, uh, Derek X, uh, is who he wants to get at. So he's saying Derek X is... Uh, is really throwing a lot of the people under the bus. Uh, we then see another conversation just a little bit later where Frenchie has now moved to the patio area in the backyard. He's talking to uh, to Tiffany and, and Derek F., uh, Derek Frazier on the patio. And he's saying, look, I I think I can uh, probably work with, with Christian and Brent this week. Well, that's good because Christian is, is safe. Uh, but he also mentions Brent, uh, who is another person I thought maybe would be a potential nominee, but now not, maybe not so much. So once again, now instead of 10 people that Frenchie's got to choose from or, or nine people, I don't even remember the count now, but now Mark Brent off the list apparently as well. The potential nominees just keep getting smaller and smaller for Frenchie at, at this point in time. Uh, but he does say that, you know, hey, I think we need to work with Christian and Brent. It'll be fine this, this week. We, we can do something with them. Apparently, at some point, maybe while the feeds were off, maybe before the feeds went off, uh, I guess Frenchie and, and Christian sat down and talked just a little bit and said, hey, you know, a little, little lack of communication with each other, but we're probably good. You know, we're good this week. So they tried to mend fences a, a little bit. We'll see if that lasts. Uh, maybe so, maybe not. Uh, now... It doesn't help Frenchie when he's trying to pick these targets. 
when you think the fact that, that Frenchie basically, I think he's got an alliance with, with just about everyone in the house. It seems like it. So with that in mind, let's, let's talk a little bit about the alliances uh, that are taking place in the house. There are a lot of them. It's a little bit confusing. If you can't keep up with them, that's all right. Because by tomorrow, they'll probably all be different. They'll have added people in, thrown people out. I, I don't think a lot of these alliances are going to last, but we'll see. Uh, there, there are certainly a lot of them. So let's talk about some of these alliances. First of all, uh, in the HOH room, uh, we've got Frenchie talking to Derek Frazier, Derek F., Christian, Xavier, and Kylan. Uh, and saying, look guys, y'all, we're, we're the core five. Y'all are my ride or die. Uh, we can make something happen. So uh, here we've got uh, five, five guys that are gonna form an alliance with each other. Uh, and what have they called themselves? The Butchers. Uh, okay, I didn't name them. I'm just uh, relaying the information. So the, the five guys are the Butchers, but Frenchie said, look, man, we got five, but we really need to add some extra people. These won't be full members of the Alliance. We'll just add them on and not let them know that they're not, that they're just kind of the accessory members. But Frenchie wants to get it up to eight people. Now you don't really need eight. You, you really need seven for the first week because Frenchie's not voting. The two nominees aren't voting. So seven votes guarantees that, that the person you want to go home goes home. But it doesn't matter. Frenchie wants uh, eight people. Uh, so in addition to those five men I mentioned that, that are the butchers, uh, we get the additions also of Tiffany, uh, Brittany, and Whitney. So with the addition of those three women, now you now have this, this alliance of eight. I don't like alliances of eight for, I don't know, just personal reasons, I suppose. But you've got an alliance of eight. The group of five is called the butchers. The group of eight is the slaughterhouse. It's gonna be one of those kind of seasons, isn't it? Uh, so we do have the Slaughterhouse uh, as as this group of big super alliance, and we'll see if it lasts or, or not. I kind of think not, but uh, surprise me. All right, uh, we also have some other alliances. We've got the Cookout Alliance, which consists of Aza, uh, Tiffany, Xavier, and Derek F. Uh, and in a very recent twist, this happened a couple hours ago, we've got the Firefighters. The Firefighters are composed of Travis, Derek X, Claire and Kylan. Uh, now, what, the interesting thing about the firefighters, they were they were kind of talking about how Frenchies, you know, talk to a lot of people and some of the stuff we'll, we'll cover this evening. But they say, look, if if we were to get power next week, what if we we don't go after Frenchie or any of his team or anything? What if we go after Christian instead? We kind of do what Frenchie maybe wants to do and can't do this week. Maybe we go after Christian and that'll create a lot of goodwill, a lot of credit with Frenchie. He'll be so grateful. I don't like using the word grateful, but he'll be so grateful that that, that may give us an opportunity to work with him further. So they're kind of thinking that maybe they can they can work some kind of deal with, with Frenchie and some of his guys as well. So that's that's the firefighters uh, that have been formed in, in that little group. Uh, now we also have to remember, there. there's a few more. Uh, we've got to remember the, the parents, and I don't know if that's the official name or anything, but we've got the parents, which are Frenchie, Whitney, and, and Tiffany. Frenchie has said that he really wants the other parents to stay in the house. He wants them to have a chance to get HOH and, and see pictures of, of family and all that. So they're gonna watch out for each other to some degree. So you've got the group, the group of parents. And of course, we still have the four teams, the Jokers, Kings, Queens, and uh, Aces. Uh, and and you know, they're, they're kind of watching out for each other uh, to, to some degree. So that creates an extra level level of alliances that, that everyone's watching out for also. Uh, so again, we've got, a, uh, we've got a lot of alliances, but also if you're confused, it'll change. Don't worry so much about it. Uh, the main thing is a lot of people making a lot of, lot of commitments to a lot of other people. And they're not, we know they're not all gonna last. We don't know who the most sincere is and, and not. Uh, we'll find that out very quickly, I absolutely believe. So, some more conversations that we've got going on. Uh, Frenchie is telling Christian, uh, again, he was his target, but now they're working together quite a bit. Uh, Frenchie's telling Christian that he, that he had two pawns, uh, but one backed out. A lot of talk about pawns, and, and I guess that happens because Frenchie was looking at a blind side as opposed to just one pawn and, and the, the actual target. So, he had two pawns, but one of them backed out. Uh, again, it sounds like the original plan was a blind side. And I think the original plan was a blind side on Christian, which I'm not sure if Christian knows or not. Uh, but is Frenchie going to stick with a backdoor plan that, that involves him putting up two pawns? 
He said at one point this evening that, yeah, he's still looking at back door. I'm not sure if that's the case, especially if it's if it's Derek as your target. Uh, uh, you know, maybe just put him up and not have two people who are pawns that you got just a little bit extra blood on your hands. But uh, sounds like that may still still be the case uh, for right now. Uh, Christian is. Uh, uh, I, I talked about that. The Frenchie was kind of down on, on uh, Derek uh, X. Well, Christian isn't much better on him either. Christian's kind of throwing Derek X under the bus to Frenchie as well. So it seems like they're on the same page in terms of maybe who, who the target is they, they want to go after. Uh, we have another conversation, and this is uh, Alyssa, and she's trying to uh, sell Derek F on the idea of Frenchie's team uh, working with the, the team, with the King team, uh, Team Kings, which is Christian, Alyssa, Xavier, and Sarah Beth. And Derek F., who is part of the Joker team, said, yeah, let's, yeah, let's see what we can make happen. So, again, you've got some of these teams trying to interact and, and create some alliances with, with other teams as well. Uh, at this point, we have uh, all the ladies, uh, most of the ladies, sitting, sitting around the hot tub, which during my season was almost never hot. Well, once or twice the whole season, we got some warm water. That's about, about the best as, as we got, which might explain why they eventually end up at the hammock uh, when... Frenchie approaches them. Frenchie's been doing a lot of talking this evening. Frenchie approaches them, and his pitch is this. He tells Sarah Beth, Claire, Alyssa, and Hannah, says, look, I need a couple of pawns to go up on the block this week, uh, but here's the thing. I promise you, there is zero risk that you're going home. I've got my target. Uh, Y'all are not going to lose to Derek X. Not only are you not going to lose to Derek X, it's going to be a unanimous vote uh, to send him home. I need two pawns. Whoever's willing to do it, uh, I'll certainly make it worth your while, but I just need you to, to do it. If you don't want to, you know, that's fine. I'll be back in five minutes, but I, I need to, I need a couple of pawns. Well, he never came back and I don't care. I don't care what they promise you. You're safe. It'll be 10 to nothing against the other person. So go ahead and volunteer. No, no. In the words of Johnny Mac, no, no. <laughs> Uh, you don't ever volunteer to be a pawn. Uh, but he's asking for volunteers, and, and he leaves, and they're kind of looking at each other like, really? Yeah, really? And, of course, it didn't take long at all before the whole house, I think, knows that, that Frenchie's out asking for pawns to, to go up on the block to, to help him out. Uh, maybe not the approach I would have used. Uh, we'll, we'll see what the repercussions uh, are on that. Now, how interesting is it going to be at this point in time if... If a couple of pawns go up on the block because they're 100% guaranteed safety, and then Derek X wins the veto and is no longer on the block. Well, let's see what happens. And then Derek X chooses not to use a veto. Uh, you know, there's always dangers involved if you're ever on the block, no matter what anyone promises you. So, so we've got that. Quick strategy break. We need it, right? Uh, the have-nots are in the kitchen mentioning that they can have protein powder, but they don't have shaker bottles. Well, we had shaker bottles in my season. You may recall a little story about a shaker bottle in a refrigerator. We had shaker bottles during my season, but we didn't have those little wire balls that go inside, so it, it didn't do a whole lot of good. My thinking is probably the, the wire balls, you, you shake them, and it just creates too much noise for the microphones, creates issues and all of that. So we got the shaker bottles, but never the, the inside parts that, that make a shaker bottle what a shaker bottle does. Uh, so just a little inside scoop on that. And now back to the strategy session. Uh, we get Derek F. and, and Tasha uh, later, and then later K Tiffany in the kitchen. Uh, Derek F. is saying that, that Derek X uh, and Travis need to go first. He really wants the two of them to go first, and then followed by Whitney. And it's based just on him feeling that, uh, that those are the strongest players that aren't part of any of their groups. Uh, so again, Derek X, Travis, and Whitney are kind of Derek F.'s uh, three main products. Uh, at this point, Hannah uh, comes in. And Tiffany tells her, says, look, you're safe, uh, but you need to stay away from us right now. Don't get too close and make people think that, that you're hanging with us and we're some kind of team as well. So, I don't know. It's kind of Hannah's like, okay, whatever. And Tiffany's basically saying, go away. Get out of here. Don't don't act like we're, we're working together at all. And so she she leaves. It was kind of funny watching that. Uh, Frenchie is telling his Joker teammates, Asha, Derek, uh, F, and Brittany, that everything tonight was planned. That even though things have kind of fallen apart, everyone knows all this stuff going on, asking for the pawns. It's just been, 
it's been a difficult night for Frenchie, but Frenchie say, no, 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 it was, it was all planned. He said, I told everyone different parts of a story because I wanted to see then who would come back with the other parts because then I could tell who was talking to each other, who may be working together that, that they aren't telling us that. So no, the, the whole thing was planned. Don't worry about it, guys. When you see me walking around, I may be stressed, but I'm not stressed. It's just me putting all the story parts together and, and figuring out who's who's talking to who else. And we got this, we, we got it taken care of. Uh, Based on that, he now thinks that uh, that he knows who's against him. And some of the names he mentions, Derek X again, Travis, uh, who he said, yeah, I thought I was going to work with Travis, but Travis is, yeah, he's, uh, he's talking to the other people too much. I'm not sure if I'm buying that this is all some grand scheme that, that's put together. But if true, Frenchie is playing the game on a whole different level of complexity. We'll just leave it at that. It's a crazy night. All right, a couple more things real quick. Uh, Derek F. is warning Frenchie that at this point, uh, if a meathead jock uh, doesn't go home this week, that the Jokers are in trouble. I think that could be the case. Uh, but it really seems, though, that, that Derek X. is the primary target, even though there was uh, talk about getting one of, the, one of the jocks out. I think Derek X. is the target. Uh, and here's the thing. Uh, alliances form early in the postseason. We've seen that. They, the house guests have seen that. So they are all in hyper mode at this point in time, trying to carve out an alliance, carve out the protection. I get it. But as I said before, this is day two. It's not day 30 or 40. Uh, and how can you trust anyone at this point to uh, to form too tight into an alliance? And so uh, we'll, we'll see where it goes. That's Here's the thing, the tough part about a first week HOH. Normally, you're named HOH on a Thursday night. Nominations occur some point on Friday. So you have maybe, what, 12 hours to, to think things through. You make your decision and then you kind of step back a little bit. That's not the case for Frenchie. He won HOH, now he's got two or three days for all these ideas to spin in his mind, for all these people to come up and make promises and, and everything else. That's a disadvantage to having an HOH where there's a long time between winning it and making your nominations. And, and Frenchie, to some degree, is paying the price for that right now. So finally, let me wrap this up with, with one bit of, of sage advice that we heard tonight, and I absolutely agree with it. Uh, Tiffany came up to Frenchie and trying to calm him down said, look, tell me, are, are you playing the game right now with your heart or, or with your brain? Which is it? And Frenchie said, well, right now I'm playing with my heart. I, I, I'm worrying about too much. I'm, I'm taking everything to heart too much. I care too much. And yeah, I'm playing with my heart. And Tiffany says, you can't play the game like that. You can't, you can't feel so bad for every single person. You can't promise everyone safety. You can't, you can't take care of everyone. You've got to play with your brain and you're not doing it. And I absolutely agree. You've got to split the emotion away from the strategy. I'm not sure it's happening right now. We'll see if, if, uh, if Frenchie can maneuver the waters and, and make it through this thing. And it's possible. It's very early in the game. So anything's possible at this point. But it does seem like Frenchie at this point in time is not going to be able to get out of this first week HOH without getting some blood on his hands. And we'll see what the, the repercussions are uh, as a result. So guys, crazy evening. Lots of alliances. And we'll see what happens. Nominations may be taking place tomorrow. We don't know for certain, but I think it may be taking place tomorrow. Y'all have a great evening. Then we got our first weekend uh, of the Big Brother season, so uh, lots of live feeds to be watched, and we'll see how this thing all, all develops. Y'all have a great night, great weekend, and I'll talk to y'all again tomorrow. Cheers, my friends. SKD 143.